section. So, as I mentioned before in the podcast, um, there was a story that leaked earlier on, I think a couple, a few weeks, a few days ago, about the Vitega Veneta um, creative director name is Daniel Lee, who was basically responsible um, or largely responsible for basically bringing Bottega Veneta back into the public consciousness, kind of reawakening a sleeping giant and kind of bringing him back into the, yeah, bringing him back to sleeping giant and making him kind of competitive again when it comes to um, the main fashion brands out that the people purchase and buy. Obviously created some seminal interesting pieces, you know, the, you know, installed some new interesting house codes and in general just created like great fashion items and clothes and whatnot. And over the period of time, people obviously lauded him, great guy, da 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 da. But then out of nowhere, he kind of leaves, right? Um, un unceremonially, no real kind of announcement or no real kind of explanation as to why, especially when you think of the monetary value he's added to the Bottega Veneta brand, you know, sales interest social media all that sort because especially without an, an official social media page they did that whole weird kind of online magazine thing that wasn't an online magazine blah 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 but in terms of kind of inf you know utilizing influencers um utilizing social media in a very unconventional way retail product placement all that good stuff they absolutely smash it so to see the guy at the helm of that leave was a bit strange and a bit weird and definitely spoke to something a bit fishy but anyway development have on, on that has been but Tegu Veneta have decided to um, promote from within and have hired a guy called Mathieu Blasi, who is a new creative director now of Bottega Veneta. He's already been working there, I think, for a couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, from what I've seen online, he's largely responsible for the following-ish items, it looks like. Stuff like this from the pre for, which I would argue for with some people, which some people would probably not argue with me because I think I'm right. Most of the pre and resort type collections, I think, are far better than the main Balenciaga, sorry, but the main Bottega Veneta runway or the main line collections, whatever they may be, right? In terms of spring, summer, fall, winter. I think, with the exception of maybe the first two runway collections, I think it started to go downhill pretty quickly for Bottega Veneta, especially the, the pre, the, the most recent one, which is kind of, you know, Daniel Lee's sort of swan song for Bottega, which obviously leads me to believe from just looking at it, evidence wise, that show in Detroit was pretty shit. Um, I thought in general, the whole idea about it going to Detroit, having what is it, is it Carl Craig do the soundtrack and shit, uh, was really um, it had the, something resonated with it, obviously, idea wise, but the money spent on it in the execution wasn't that great. And I think, obviously, because that's the interesting thing, I think, as well about fashion. That collection wasn't good. I don't know if people, people said it though, but because Daniel Lee's a fashion guy and he's kind of well. It, well accepted within the fashion glitterati and within the sort of snobby fashion world sort of stuff he's more excused for that kind of you know runway collection but then if matthew williams does that sort of stuff everyone's always kind of piling on because he's not a conventional quote-unquote designer that went to fashion school i think those kind of double standards people have in fashion is very i don't know it's kind of gross especially when you think about the when you think about it in terms of the daniel lee situation it's pretty evident especially since they're in um hired somebody internally from what i can see again not being somebody who has any information or anything going on inside of fashion but it's pretty bait that more likely than not this daniel lee guy is a bit of a cunt behind the scenes right bit of a terrible boss people probably didn't like him he probably ruled the studio with an iron fist he probably was the kind of guy that took credit for stuff he never designed he probably overstated or overplayed how important he was the actual success of the brand right like me 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 that kind of cringe picture he did with his top off on the magazine remember that awkward picture with his little chicken arms on the front of a picture of his freckled body like just awful right it didn't really scream sex appeal or sexy or self-awareness in any way shape or form it did scream a bit of narcissism and the delusion of the grandeur which obviously you do need delusions of grandeur if you're going to be a flipping rock star creative director of a flipping luxury house but in general let's be let's call a spade a spade if this guy left the way he did and they're employing somebody from within it's definitely goes to show that he was a bit of a cunt if that's the case i've only heard good things about matthew williams i've only met him once in my life but i've only heard good things about him industry wise why does he get a blight if he's actual good guy i don't get it in fashion man the cut more country you are the more people seem to kind of give you a blight with your <laughs> runway collection but when you're an actual decent person and you're actually kind of trying to just make cool things and approach stuff in a cool and interesting way like matthew williams is and uh, with the leaks and stuff that obviously he's doing um now with um 
Givenchy, people are quick to pile on, but then when it comes to Daniel Laney's last show at Detroit, and no one even says anything. But again, we move on. Anyway, this new guy, Matthew, Bl Matthew, Matthew, I think so you say Matthew, Matthew Blasi, I think is largely responsible for these sort of looks. And according to his Instagram, he's also responsible for these sort of looks too from the mainline collection, which I thought was really cool. If I'm not mistaken, Skepta was something similar to this to a show or something. Um, this, this really amazing, uh, I guess what would you call that? Would you call it his interpretation of tart? What do you not 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 tartan? What's that? What's that print? I'm thinking of, but you know what I mean. It's a, it's a knit or a print. I, I'm not assuming. I'm assuming it's a knit. Whatever knit that interpretation that he's made there, it looks incredible. It comes in a complete suit, in the pants, the sandals, and the bag. And again, we got a last example here from the last slide, also showing some stuff. No, that's actually talking about the people arguing about whether or not it should be uh, a POC that's taken over, which is absolutely laughable. We'll talk about that in another minute. But anyway, go back to the main article. Um, Kershia Vogue says, Kering have announced that Matthew Blasey, um, Matthew Blasey or Matthew Blasey, um, is assuming the creative director role at the Bottega Veneta following Daniel Lee's abrupt departure last week. You know, these little kind of, again, these little side pop up videos on these websites are really annoying, but they're also clever because what they do from working for various fashion magazines and startups and digital brands is that they use the metrics of you clicking articles and having these things auto play. They use those metrics of like, that every time it also plays they count that as a view or as an interaction when i click it and shit so that when they then you don't then put that in their deck when they're gonna go market for brands and have them to kind of sponsor the website or advertise or whatnot so it's very clever in that regard but it's very scummy and it's obviously not a great user experience because you have these we have these fucking videos playing in the background with these asinine kind of clips and shit but anyway continue the news that lee was stepping down stunned the industry he did more than revive the italian luxury house he set the style agenda and as anyone who's browsed the racks at the fast fashion chain can tell blasi's um, appointment isn't quite as surprising he was lee's number two at took a veneta from mid 2020 um caring has had enormous success moving behind the scenes designers and spot Lights here, Alessandro Michele at Pagucci. Also, Bloody is not the unknown that Lee was. The, the 32 7 year old Belgium designer was widely respected and liked since he first attracted notice at Margiela. Um, though he maintained anonymity at the at the influential fashion house, was known for Bloody's work, was distinguished, both attuned at the Margiela codes of his time. Kanye West famously copied to the crystal and created Mars from the artisanal automotive collection show for his Easy Tour. And supposedly, I think he designs that as well. So he obviously worked in collaboration with that, blah, 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 blah. But he's in some pieces that he did with Marjola Margiela Artisanal. And he continues, from Margiela, Blasi went on to work for the, ex um, exa the exacting Phoebe Fowler at Celine, who is said to have been headhunted him himself. He and Lee overlapped there. And after that, he joined Calvin Klein, 203, da, 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 of course, where a partner, Pietri Mueller, was a creative director under Chief Executive um, Ralph Simmons. Blasi and Mueller met at the San Simmons Art Turbo headquarters, elevating a company inside. Oh, shit. Two, two very, very big fashion designers are a couple. That's a real power couple then in fashion. Isn't it? I didn't know that. Shit. Um, elevating a company insider suggest um, elevating a co elevating a company insider suggest that we're in for a subtle shift at particular Veneta rather than the wholesale reinvention of what's come across the norm. Um, the part of boosts have become unlikely status symbol under the least tenure seems sure to remain. Same with the other side's intractical motives and gave an edge to the brand's long held artisanal codes. Indeed, um, in a statement, Francois Henri Pinot um, said, or Pinot, Pinot, or Pinot, Pinot, right? Chairman of CEO of Caring said, I'm confident that Matthew Blasi's um, wealth of experience and broad cultural background will allow him to bring this creative input impetus to the lack to task so to the lack of task to the task of carrying on the legacy of taking Vanessa Blasi first collection for the label will be February 2022. So more likely than not Michael B. Jordan there in the cut checking out Calvin Klein look more likely than not from what I remember or from what I saw from what they did with um um, Hedy Slimane at Saint Laurent Paris from all the kind of stuff that he created like the wire boots and the jeans and some of the jackets and shit some of the key pieces have now become like the wardrobe staples of Bottega Veneta will stay I'm sure like the lug boots 
or the tractor boot, whatever they're called, the lug boot, tractor boot, whatever they're called, the paddle boots, of course, still. Um, some of the clutch bags, the heels, some of the maybe the cuts of the coat, maybe that kind of members, maybe that kind of work jacket kind of coat that Kanye wore also that's kind of popular, everyone likes that, maybe stay. The bomber jacket, some of the pants, right? There's gonna be some pieces that will stay. And then what we'll see now, we'll see who's really got the genius level ability to make fashion or to make, you know, clothes. If the collection hits the same as those first two that Daniel Lee did when he was kind of first out of the gate, right? If they are the same level or the same sort of standard as that sort of stuff, then we'll know that some of the reasons why that stuff was so magical is because of the team and less so about the one dude, which is always a, which is always a disappointment when it comes to fashion. There's not a lot of people, especially that's why I think the streetwear guys coming into fashion is really good and really important because there's always a sense of collaboration and always a sense of kind of pulling back the curtain and showing how exactly the sausage is made when it comes to streetwear from time of like old videos of like Nigo and Hiroshi screen printing t-shirts and shit there was never any mystery behind how streetwear clothes were made it's always just the same ideas you and I have but then these guys are willing to put their money where their mouth is you know stump up, stump up some money buy some blanks get some stuff printed and go and sling some stuff in the shop and whatnot do you know what I mean that's what they're actually willing to do but when it comes to fashion this whole kind of mysterious allure this visage or this kind of idea that this is one dude or one girl that's a genius that's making everything and making a decision is obviously sometimes true in some cases but also in most cases it's not it's usually a collection of people a team who are kind of contributing to the overall magic of the entire collection and when that team and when sometimes that person gets plucked away from that team and gets put on their own you sometimes get to see who's actually really really about it and who actually maybe his time has kind of come, come and gone in it and let's see what Daniel Lee does kind of going forward it probably isn't the time for him to go straight into making his own brand I don't think maybe kind of plugging himself into another brand and hopefully trying to revive that might be a good way to go about things but I'm curious to see what this um, uh, Matthew Blessy does now going forward and I'm curious to see if the levels of the clothing are going to be just as good as some of again some of my favorite looks that i kind of saw during the resort collection and whatnot or whether it's going to be something that's going to be um a slight kind of departure away from all this sort of stuff and also want to know creative directing wise whether it's not going to going to you know utilize the same looks type of models in you know in my opinion there was a little bit of a excessive pandering done towards the black community which i was a bit conflicted about it's quite they did it in a great way because obviously you know skepta fucking loves that brand right in general but it was a little bit heavy-handed i thought in some respects i always wondered what the what that what that was all about but it did work obviously because it captured the kind of cultural zeitgeist and if you are if you do kind of want to get yourself plugged in there's no better way to kind of get yourself plugged in and to get yourself cool and to get yourself cool you got to appeal to like black twitter and shit right and those heels what are those heels those mesh heels remember those heels that they Bernard Yoga did those mesh kind of stilettos they came they they became like a bad bee's favorite on social media do you know what I mean so it kind of was able to, to transcend um cultural socio-economical uh, racial kind of levels in a very quick way especially in the three-year period like it's absolutely obscene how quickly they did it so i'm wondering if matthew blasey does the same thing as he comes in or maybe if he decides to kind of pivot and kind of you know steer the collection or steer the brand into a different direction overall i'm very very curious to see what's going on but again congrats to him obviously it's a big appointment obviously it's gonna be a lot of pressure but obviously he's you know from the looks of him from his cv he's got a lot of experience worked in the industry he's cut his teeth at all the right places you know margella what they say margella celine yeah well he's, he's worked with flipping he worked at margella Maison, 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 margella of course not with you know, margella but still with this in the same in the same house with the same people uh, who kind of worked with the obviously the genius himself He's worked alongside Phoebe Philo and has worked alongside Raph Simmons. And obviously he studied at the um the famous Belgian fashion school. He'll be fine. I mean he'll be completely fine. He'll know what to do. He's well liked, well respected, it looks like from the industry. So I'm sure he'll be appreciated in that respect going forward. So let's see, man. Interested to see what goes on going forward. I think it's at the same time that Phoebe Philo debuts her collection as well. Her debut um namesake collection. I'm pretty sure maybe it's before that. It's gonna be an interesting time in fashion to see what's gonna go on, man. The levels are gonna be upped again. Paris Fashion Week is going to be on fire once again, on fire, on fire, on fire.